you've seen in the Bible. It's just, there's nothing like it, guys. And I mean, it's really hitting the home. You know, here we are going through the book of Revelation and, and seeing what's going on as, uh, you know, Christ in Matthew 24 calls it birth pains, right? We're starting to see that now, especially now the ru- wars and rumors of wars, uh, again, which will increase the famines. It just, but the thing that is really astonishing is, it, it isn't, but when you start seeing it, is the demonic activity ramping up like I've never seen it. You see uh, how it has a stranglehold on basically Islam. <laughs> I don't care if it's in the Middle East, Islam and the, the U.S. Uh, you know, there's different strains of it, just like there's different strains of Christianity, but uh, that hatred that Satan's put against the Jewish people, you know, again, because if he can, somehow he thinks he can uh, get away with eliminating the Jews, uh, the prophecy won't be fulfilled. But one encouraging thing about this thing, even with this thing with Israel, uh, they're going to be here through the end, right? So whatever's going on right now, (laughs) in there, whether it's Hamas or uh, Hezbollah or now Iran starting to, you know, saber rattle, uh, they're going to be there. He's going to protect them. Now, are there going to be casualties and stuff? As you've seen, yes, there are. But uh, there's still that remnant that's going to make it through the end times. So be encouraged. Don't, uh, you know, you hear that, oh, they're going to wipe them off the face of the earth. It's not going to happen, you know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're still God's people. So uh, with that, we'll roll in. And we're in chapter 11. You know, the uh, two witnesses, okay, uh, came upon the scene. Again, the speculation of was it was it uh, Moses and was it, uh, was it Elijah? En- Enoch's been there or, or is it a couple different folks? We don't know. But again, they start their... Uh, in the first part of the tribulation, the first seven years, and again, God supernaturally is protecting these two as they do their thing, and they have supernatural powers, godly powers that anybody gets in their way and never says that they fry anybody, but they're there, and he supernaturally protects them for that three and a half years. And at the end, uh, I think at that three and a half years, God says your mission's completed. And uh, so he lets uh, Satan have his, or the Antichrist have his way with him. So it talks about him coming out of the abyss, and uh, they slay the two. And they lay in the streets for uh, probably real close, I would assume. I don't know exactly. It's got to be real close to uh, the rebuilt temple, I would assume. They're there in Jerusalem anyway. And everybody's celebrating, having a birthday party. <laughs> that uh, his two witnesses are dead, lying in the street, you know, with all of our modern media and stuff. Everybody's just having a good old time and rejoicing. And then they see him stirred to life. And the Lord uh, says, come up here. Just a quick command in the cloud. and They're uh, up. And uh, so they're back in heaven. And at that point, there's where, again, there's a earthquake that happens. And uh, that earthquake uh, basically destroys about a tenth of Jerusalem right there. And it says in the uh, scripture, 7,000 people die from that earthquake as it uh, uh, starts rolling through. But But anyway, so that's kind of where we're leaving off. And now we're kind of coming where we start getting into a little bit is the seventh trumpet. As you know, the the six seals did their thing. And then the uh, seventh seal opened up the trumpets, right? So we had the uh, six trumpets that went through. And now the seventh trumpet opens up uh, the the, uh, first bowl judgment, right? So... That's kind of where we are, so it's been a bad time on the earth. And uh, uh, 
Right, right. Yeah, that was the week before. And we kind of went back over again that, but that portion where the first three were against the earth, or the first four, and then the, and then so we've gone through, uh, uh, so all that good stuff is like uh, <laughs> in chapter 10, and then the end when we hit chapter 11. So the seventh trumpet, so we'll start right there. Uh, on the seventh trumpet, that'll be uh, verse or chapter eleven, verse fifteen. So uh, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, "The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever." And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your saints, and those whose reverence, who reverence your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple... In heaven is opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. So we're here. It's gonna, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a little bit of a lull again before. Uh, and I don't know if at this point if they're going. Okay, let's take a little recess and let's see what's going on in heaven as we know what's going on on earth and uh, see what, what what's actually happening up in heaven. But again, the seventh angel, we don't know who that is, but, uh, but there were loud voices in heaven. And it, like last week, when I remember when we're starting to transition into the, you know, the future reign, the millennial reign, because Remember when the angel came and sat and put one foot on the land and one foot on the sea, right? God's way of, hey, we're, we're, we're taking back what we gave humans to Satan <laughs> for the last 6,000 years, but that time is, is coming near an end. So that's kind of what is going on with that. When uh, it says the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of the Lord and of his Christ, so again, the kingdom of the world. Of course, he's talking about the Lord, and in this instance, he means God of our Lord and of his Christ. So then God the Father and God the Son right there. Um, but again, uh, and he will reign forever and ever. And again, we know the eventual outcome is uh, eternity with God reigning in heaven. And uh, we know we know where we're coming. So uh, he says, "The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord." And again, we're we're transitioning to uh, uh, Christ's rule instead of uh, Satan's rule. So we give thanks to you, Lord Almighty, the one who is and who was. You know, every time it's amazing how you see when they when they do their prayer and their thanks and <laughs> how they the reverence they give to uh, him every time. The one who is and the one who was uh, is just amazing how they uh, just revere. <laughs> and I think when you're in his presence, <laughs> you're probably not out of fear, more of reverence or, you know, fear is reverence in biblical terms. But uh, so we got the 24 elders again, right? The 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped, saying, so again, we go back to the 24 elders, all right? So again, if you look at biblical, is it the uh, 12? Is it the 12 apostles and uh, representatives from the 12 tribes of Israel sitting as the 24 elders? Uh 
But he said, we give thanks to you and because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. So they're kind of com coming from, uh, you know, like when you know the end of a story, right? You've seen a movie a few times, you know what's coming. So I think in this sense, they're, they're, they know what's coming. They're already saying, this is happening. <laughs> it's going to happen. So I think that's where they're coming from when they, uh, when they say you've begun to reign. It is, it is getting close, and the judgments are part of, hey, all right, this is what's happening, and yeah, I'm taking control now. Uh, you have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. Again, the believers have been raptured out, right? We have the ones that have been uh, martyred as they've gone through the tribulation. We still have more tribulation saints that are going to be martyred and brought up. And uh, But the ones left, you know, you just got to think about the condition of their their heart. I mean, you see... Again, let's let's transition to what's going on right right now. You see the heartless, heartless souls of these people just glorifying death of you know, babies and just ruthless murders. Nothing good about it at all, and these people are rejoicing. And that, to me, that <laughs> I don't know where their soul is, but it's it's hard to, to fathom that that people could be that that cruel but the, like I say with the saints out of the way the Holy Spirit removed from uh, as far as his uh, presence as far as limiting the damage you know when, when the church age was there you know the church was there the Holy Spirit was there in the fullness restraining evil but that's all been taken away now and all we have is the leftovers, and unfortunately, most of the leftovers are really rank. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> but uh, so the nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and God's judgment now, as uh, as Scripture says, you know, judgment is mine, saith the Lord, and it's starting to be fulfilled through these and. Uh, so for all the martyrs and everything, is said, how could this be? How could you let this? This is starting to come to fruition. Again, justice has been delayed, but it's inevitable that he will do what he's going to do. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your saints, and those who reverence your name. So so. There's some good stuff going on with that. You can tell that, uh, you know, while this stuff is going on, we're up there. Uh, and uh, there's some stuff going on. It says, in the time for the dead to be judged and for re rewarding of your servants, prophets, and saints. So, again, they're speaking of future things going on here, but... Uh, the dead are as good as judge, and the saints are being rewarded. Again, this is kind of anticipatory language that, hey, we know what's going on here. Uh, the two groups of believers are mentioned, the prophets, right? And the saints, and we're all, <laughs> believe it or not, we are, we are saints. Uh, and the prophets of old. Uh, but... Uh, but he's recognizing those who fear your name, both small and great. Uh, it's pretty cool, you know, that uh, we're now being, you know, recognized for our patience, especially in the time that we are in right now. You know, again, as the attacks against uh, the Jewish people uh, continue to increase, uh, us Christians are going to be uh, kind of, part of that backwash too, uh, especially when we get uh, to that three and a half years when, uh, you know, the Antichrist tries to take the most of the Jews out. But when God uh, protects those, and he's coming after whatever Christians, whatever Christians that have come to the Lord during this tribulation time, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be coming. So, uh, 
So destroying the destroyers of the earth. And you know what? I, I don't, that one kind of is an interesting little term. Uh, destroying the destroyers of the earth. So I think in ways, I don't know if, if the ecologists might be <laughs> glad at this point that the Lord has seen what has been done to this earth and what's going to happen. And, you know, I think there's some retribution. I created this beautiful, wonderful planet for you guys. And uh, you guys kind of used it for a trash dump in a lot of ways and you've abused it. And so I think there's a, a sense there that hey, I'm also gonna <laughs> I'm also gonna judge those who uh, trash my earth. So it's a good thing. Uh, even though it'll be rebuilt, but <laughs> but again, it should never have had to have been, huh? So then we got uh, the last one. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within His temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. And there were, came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great or massive hailstorm. So we got kind of a cool thing going here. And uh, I read some stuff on it, and it's kind of about the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant was seen within his temple. And it says right here in this little side note, it says many Bible expositors see the Ark to be the emblem of God's atonement, his faithfulness, and his presence among the Israelites. The last time we saw the Ark of the Covenant, as you remember, uh, it was back in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 35, and it was in Solomon's temple, right? And that was the last time that it was known, and we lost track of it. A lot of theories on what happened. One is, uh, of course, when Nebuchadnezzar came and he destroyed it and it, it was probably melted down for gold or whatever. Uh, uh, I've heard ones that it's sitting secretly in uh, not Egypt, but uh, Ethiopia. We've heard that rumor that it's somewhere there. Uh, also, Jeremiah. If you remember in Jeremiah, uh, and this is out of the Maccabees. So remember, the Maccabees aren't part of uh, our traditional Bible. They were added into the uh, to the uh, Catholic Bible, right? But in Second Maccabees, it states that Jeremiah had hid a cave in Mount Sinai. This is all just speculation. Uh, but the thing I find odd that they're looking at it and from the things that I, that they think the one there cannot be the regular arc that was originally here. And I'm going, why not? <laughs> you know, if they haven't found it yet, and he said, hey, it's time to uh, take the arc and put it back or, and, you know, just leave it. So, but it's pretty cool that, uh, so whichever one, like I said, if it's actually the arc that they built back then or if it's, uh, Again, remember how the Bible kind of, you've got shadows of things, that the ark on the earth was a shadow of the substance of what's eternal in heaven, this ark. But uh, but that's pretty cool that the ark is still around. So Indiana Jones <laughs> did not find it. <laughs> it's not sitting in some warehouse <laughs> in Washington, D.C., right? Uh but anyway, but as that God's temple in heaven was opened, and then uh, you see the ark, and then again, there's some kind of cosmic disturbance. It says flashes of lightnings, rumblings, peals of thunder, and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. So again, I think that's probably a signal, hey, we got the seven sealed judgments coming, and I'm going to give you another taste of what's coming. So, again, how great the hailstorm. <laughs> and we saw the ones that we had in <laughs> Strasbourg back in May, huh? Could you imagine something with just, oh, couldn't even imagine. So that ends uh, Chapter 11 uh, officially. Uh, any questions, thoughts on that? Nothing exciting? All righty. 
So now we get into the good stuff, huh? I mean, it's all been good. <laughs> but uh, we got uh, chapter 12. And so uh, we really start getting into these next two chapters on, especially 13 on uh, the Antichrist and all that good stuff. But uh, chapter 12 is affectionately known as the woman and the dragon. So we will read the first paragraph. Or s we'll see how far we get here on this. So chapter 12, a great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 star stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Okay, so we can stop it right there. Now, uh, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman. Now, this woman, there's two women that you're going to see in Revelation, but this one represents Israel, okay? Uh, and just to let you know, the dragon will uh, refer to Satan, okay? The, great, the red dragon, okay? So when you see the woman in this one, it's just uh, she represents Israel, because right there it says, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. So again, uh, clothed with the sun, the brightness, you know, of Israel, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars. Now the 12 stars, again, they just represent, again, the 12 tribes of Israel. And the moon is always associated uh, to God's covenant relationship to the Jewish people. So we're kind of seeing that all come through on that one. And uh, it says she was pregnant and cried out in pain. Does that sound normal, ladies? <laughs> But, uh, and about to give birth. Uh, so, uh, now we know they gave birth to, uh, of course, Christ, and that's going to be involved in this, but scholars are thinking that this part is just that the pain that the Jewish people have had to go through basically since their, their inception all the uh, issues with the other nations, the other nations, a lot of it caused by themselves, of course, when they disobeyed, but even those rulers went too far and did stuff that they shouldn't have done. So uh, that's what scholars think, that that part of it, was when it says to give birth, that it was painful. But then uh, another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads, and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. Now, when you look at that, you go, what? <laughs> and you, you know, when I was a new Christian, I started reading all this stuff. I'm going, man, is this guy, what kind of drugs is he? <laughs> what kind of hallucinogenics on him? But again, they, uh, you know, again, they, uh, during his time, uh, John the Revelator, they, there was stuff in their culture that they would go to to symbolize this and symbolize that. So when we understand that those symbols, those icons, it becomes easier to understand. So it says, Behold, a great red dragon. And of course, this is Satan. And the red, uh, because of the, not the blood of Christ that atoned for us, but because he is the destroyer and the red may just imply the bloodshed that through the centuries and what's going on now that he has caused upon humanity. He's always been a murderer. Remember in John 8.44, said he had seven heads and ten horns and on his head and on his heads seven diadems. So again, if we go back to Daniel, especially Daniel chapter 7, this will make a little more sense when Daniel starts talking about that. Daniel talks about the seven heads and the ten horns. Uh, but anytime you see, 
the heads and the horns. Again, horns is a symbol of power, right? And you have seven heads or crowns. So we're looking at a power structure here. It goes, it goes uh, we, uh, that Satan's control over the world is now coming to fruition, right? He's got, especially when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he's already been influencing everything going on. The Antichrist is probably already on the scene that by this time, consolidating power. So again, uh, this is a consolidation of the world powers under the Antichrist, and that's what, uh, uh, like in Daniel 7.7, 7, it says the ten horns, right? But again, the ten horns represent ten kings or ten rulers or principalities that are going to be on on the on the earth as we see it today. I remember reading something about, and I can't remember. I read it a long time. The uh, you know the world government and they they want to set up the world in ten different controlling <laughs> sections. <laughs> believe it or not. So it's, again, it's amazing how this coincidence that just comes through and we're seeing that. So, um, but again, so these 10 countries or whoever's going to rule these new areas, there's going to be 10 rulers, 10 presidents, 10 kings. This is going to uh, be the nucleus of the world empire. And uh, that the Antichrist under the power of Satan is going to control. We don't know where the United States is going to be in there. Uh, just looking at it right now, we're just going to be something. But you can see we've basically given up the power that we had to be a good nation and just to become something that is used by other nations now. And again, Satan, as he's known also, called the dragon or the serpent. And now we'll uh, go on with that. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so we're back to the birth again, so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. But she gave birth to the son, a male child, who will roll rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into a desert to a place prepared to her by God where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. Okay, so we got Satan. It says his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven. Now, stars can also be replaced with angels, right? That Those two terms. So when he's say that a third of, uh, that's when a third of the angels were with Satan as uh, they were removed from heaven. So a third of them were removed from heaven. And uh, so that it might devour Satan, again, what he wanted to do, and you know, this is kind of weird. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I go, you know, Satan is really an intelligent pers person, angel, right? And he knew the Bible, and but somehow, maybe through his anger, he, he kind of missed the birth of the Messiah, right? Because he was a little slow at it. Think about what happened, you know? <laughs> Here come, here come the three kings through Jerusalem, right? Uh, that we want to go see the Messiah. Herod says, hey, uh, when you let me know so we can come worship him, right? They find him. They flee because an angel says, you better not go back there. And, then, and uh, Herod's all pissed off, so <laughs> he sends his soldiers and they kill everybody in uh, Bethlehem two years and under. But I'm wondering why Satan if he knows his Bible or knows the ancient scrolls or what was going to happen, why he wasn't better prepared. Maybe he's frothing at the mouse <laughs> mouth all the time, just killing, and, and maybe he just lost. I know he's not omnipresent, you know, 
just like the Lord. But I, I'm just curious if anybody has any thoughts on that. That's just different. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because there were two Bethlehems, but this Bethlehem was where David was born. So, yeah. But, and again, I think he still has to play by the Lord's rules. Even. Right, right. Yeah. He's probably like Herod thinking, you know, like they are great big Messiah on a white big horse and not some yeah lowly manger so yeah and uh, you know that probably goes to his pride and arrogance that hey this guy is going to some big hotty potty right <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah and again the Lord's always a step ahead of him so the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that she might devour her child. And she gave birth to Christ, uh, the male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. Now that's really interesting. And people don't, don't realize we are going to go back to a, th uh, like in Iran and stuff like that, they live under a theocracy, right? And this is going to be uh, the Lord's theocracy, right? Uh, not nothing as evil as, you know, what goes on in the Middle East and Iran and stuff like that. But it says he's going to rule with an iron scepter. So what that, and that's during the millennial reign, right? So these people are going to be expected to toe the line, you know. But again, I think there's going to be such a difference in the attitude and the way it's run and stuff like that. But they're still going to people, you know, after that thousand years, you know, they're, they don't like his thumb, you know, in their business. And, you know, when they let him out again. <laughs> Theocracy is, it's, it's ruled by uh, religious principles, right? Like, you know, everything they do in Iran, the mullahs, uh, you know, according to their book and uh, so, yeah, it will be a theocracy as far as a, a Christian, Judeo-Christian theocracy, but it does say. Right, right, right. So, but this will be, everybody's going to be, I don't think, you know, and it doesn't really say, but I, I really think that who has ever left over, they're going to have to live under the Lord's theocracy. Whether they like it or not, uh, they're going to have to abide by, you know, his standards. And, you know, most of the people are going to, I'm sure, like it, but there's still people that are still really individualistic. And so. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... Uh, the male child, which is Christ, will rule the nations with an iron scepter. And then, uh, and then she kind of it kind of goes back, and her child was snatched up to God in His throne. So after, uh, of course, Calvary, right? Forty days after the Lord is risen, taken up, and that's where we are. So it, you kind of see, kind of switches back and forth on some different thought patterns here. Is you know John's trying to make sense of what's going on. And then uh, right here, the woman fled in the desert to a place prepared to her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. So now we have a quick flash back to the future. She, he was just talking about the past. Now, boom. So what's going on there is, again, that... Uh, uh, He's going to protect the ones that get out. He's going to supernaturally protect them. Again, whether it's Petra or because Petra's in Jordan, I believe, or uh, there's a few other places they think it might be. But 
when they get there, and it, there's a little more in the future about it, but uh, they're going to be protected. But the ones that don't get out, uh, it's going to be nasty for them because later on when we look, uh, and here's why the Jews will still be around because the ones that don't get protected, basically two-thirds of the Jews that are still alive at that time aren't not going to be alive when the Antichrist does his thing. They're going to get butchered and butchered just like people that have come to Christ at that point and stuff. So it's going to be a bad time for the remnant of the Jews that didn't make it to the safe haven wherever that <laughs> That is, so it's going to be a bad time for them. And like I say, two-thirds of them are going to perish. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of... we. Anyway, the woman fled in the desert. So, again, that's the uh, second half of the three and a half year, or the seven years of that tribulation. Uh, and then here is again, and there was war in heaven... Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient servant called the devil, of, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. You know, that's... Uh, Kind of a one that's hard for me to wrap my mind around because if let's go back to Job when he would let, you know, he had access to heaven and he still has some type of access into let the Lord, you know, into uh, heaven. <laughs> anyway, they're defeated at that point and finally hurled out. But you know, God always. His thoughts are are uh, higher than our thoughts, and uh, I'm sure it'll all be explained when uh, we do it. I guess, you know, even kind of weird, but Satan was one of his creations too. And uh, I don't know how his love for his angels versus the humankind, it's probably the same, I guess, in some ways, so... I don't understand that portion of it. But if any of you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, you got to wonder. He, I assume he gave the angels uh, just like us free will. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, I mean, let's, you had kind of a triad of super angels, right? Satan, uh, you know, Michael and Gabriel, you know, and he was one of, he was there, he was their worship leader, right? And that's why I think song is so, can be so destructive with the lyrics or whatever, but, uh, you know, somewhere that pride if they have free will, which is another one, start writing these down for when we get when we get there, right? <laughs> so, but uh, if that pride issue, he's magnificent, beautiful to look on, you know, a child of light, uh, you know, somewhere in that area, they're, you know, thinking, hey, I'm I'm better than him, or I could be better than him, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's kind of. And then a third of the angels. And the only other question I have is at that point when the, the third is thrown down, do they have that free will anymore? Because it kind of sounds like the third of the angels stay 
with Satan, the two thirds stay with Christ. So, where does that offshoot? Because you don't hear him like saying, "Hey, I want to go be in Satan's army now," or "I want to go back and be with God's army." Maybe once that bridge was crossed, so to speak, that dividing line. I don't know. That's a, another one. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I. Those are some theological discussions. <laughs> You have to ask Paul. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that would be great. You know how great it's going to be when you're like, you see like Paul walking down the road and say, hey, Paul, <laughs> come here. <laughs> I got a question for you. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when every tear is wiped away, it, those finals, whatever, you know, when we sit in the beam of seat of Christ, I don't know, there are probably going to be some tears there, I would assume, when God just yeah. opens up. Right, and God opens up our, our lives and says, you know, even though we're going to be there and we're going to be... A, awarded somewhere, but I'm sure we're going to see all those opportunities that maybe we missed or should have took advantage of, you know, there's going to, and I don't think there's going to be anybody, including Paul <laughs> or whatever, that's at the Bema seat going, yeah, there's not going to, there's going to be no 100% there, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, all righty, so we're there, uh, of course, we know Satan, he's just a the bad guy. So we go to 10 and 12. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. Yay. <laughs> uh, so few things here that are really uh, uh, the accusers of our brothers, you know. That's what Satan's job has been. And he's never going to have access again and hurled out because he accused us and he's gone. But the other thing that continues to accuse us is our own conscious, our own what I did. Do we still live in that past of maybe I should have done this? You know, I, I failed in this. And that's where he still wants a tentacle in us. And uh, we just have to remember, and again, I have sometimes a hard time remembering this, that our sins are now separated as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't see any of those. Even though, again, I don't know how that's going to work out on the Bema seat and how that's all going to come through as, and, uh, as, as that happens. But nobody's going to get kicked out at that point, right? <laughs> Go, no, no, how'd you get in here? You're out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I think at that time in our, as we have our new bodies and our new minds and our new 
<laughs> we're going to understand, I think, a lot more who we were. and But that stuff's going to fade away, you know. Because even when you're thinking of loved ones and stuff like that, I don't even know if that stuff, after the fullness of uh, his reign takes place, you know. But uh, that's a good thing. Anyway, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Testimony Sundays, right? It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and it's good. You know, I'm glad to see that. Uh, uh, and these ones are the word of their testimony. Remember, these people are now tribulation saints, right? And a lot of them are going to be killed, but they're going to be witnessing and knowing that, hey, they're probably going to be beheaded or shot or whatever. And uh, I think with everything that's going on there, they they realize, hey, <laughs> I know where I'm going, so you need to take care of me. Take care of me. <clears throat> so it says, therefore, uh, see, and again it says, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. And that's powerful too. Again, you know, there's so many martyrs that have had to stand on, if I say I'm a, follower of Christ, I know I'm going to lose this life here. And, uh, you know, especially in this time when the uh, Antichrist is, uh, you know, raging and Satan's raging and it's pretty much 100% assured that you're going to lose your life. But again, this therefore is rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea. So we're going to be having a good time. <laughs> A wonderful time in heaven, but then uh, he throws that little caveat, but woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. So again, you know, he's going to be uh, just, yeah, he knows his time is short. There's going to be a vengeance and a, just a bloody... He's just massacre on uh, on the people that uh, he knows still love the Lord. So we'll start with chapter or verse thirteen. What time you got there, Father? Seven twenty-seven. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to earth, he pursued the women, the woman, not the women, <laughs> who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times and a half a time out of the serpent's reach. So again, he's going to come down, the woman or Israel, the ones that made it, uh, remember wings, back in the Old Testament, are kind of a, hey, this is a freedom thing on the wings of evil. They're going to be protected now, uh, and he's going to try to pursue them, but with not much luck. Uh, so uh, so wherever this place is that the uh, people of Israel are going to be held, we know it's in the desert because <laughs> it says... <laughs> somewhere prepared for her in the desert. And I'm as sure that he's probably going to supernaturally feed them, probably just like in the days of Moses with manna or whatever he's going to do and whatever kind of protective dome he has that uh, Satan's going to try to get in, but he's going to realize he can't. Out of the serpent's reach, then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to to overtake the woman and sweep her away with a torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea so again, he's going to try to pursue her. Now again, they don't know if this is a, a biblical or not a, but a actual flood waters that he tries to drown these people. 
significant, maybe like the Red Sea type, or is it a vast army that's pursuing them like a, uh, like a flood? But whatever, whatever the uh, issue is, it's not going to work because from out of his mouth, uh, you know, but the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the, swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. So, again, at that point, uh, I kind of reckon this to remember when they're below Mount Sinai <laughs> and the ones are going with uh, who was the guy that was causing all the troubles on Mount Sinai. I'm, I'm looking at the Ten Commandments and I remember that guy's but he says, you that are Dathan, he says, you that were Dathan, stand with Dathan. You that are with me, stand with me. And then he just opens the earth, boom, Dathan and his followers. But they even look at that, you know, Dathan, they just seen all these miraculous signs. They're in the desert, you know. They got the Ten Commandments. And then, you know, within, what, 24 hours? <laughs> Or after he goes up, he was up there for 40 days, right? He was up there quite a while. But here they are back into the same old people. And uh, some of them stood with Dathan. But uh, so these ones that are pursuing him, just like the Egyptian army, he's going to take care of them and he's going uh, to make sure that uh, it ends right there. So the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring. So I think he knows supernaturally I can't get to his people. There's limits that God has, and I can't get to them. So guess who he's going to go after? The offspring. And again, that's anybody uh, basically that has become a saint during that time or the Jews that, uh, you know, have come to Christ and know that he's Lord and Savior. So he's going after everybody now, anybody that is uh, a believer. And uh, again, you know, with his power and stuff, uh, it's going to be pretty tough. Any questions on uh, chapter 12? Any thoughts? Any Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, in a way we're living in uh, pretty amazing times and uh, we won't be there. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at all the... Old, Old Testament prophets, they never had that, you know, every one of them. They just believed by faith. And he gave us, he gave us the last chapter. <laughs> the butler did it, right? And uh, so it's pretty amazing that, uh, that he's, and again, I think that also kind of with everything going on, with all the information we have and God's word that we have and for people still to reject him, uh, you know, that's uh, pretty rough stuff. Yeah, they have it. And they're going to really get the clue, you know. Again, if, if 680 million people are raptured out of the uh, earth at one time, children gone, you know, they're going to try to explain it away by something, you know, whether it's aliens or... But that's a huge wake up to probably ninety percent of the people still living on the earth, going, "Hey, maybe this uh, God thing is true. <laughs> this God of the Bible is true." So, uh, what time are we up? Are we are we ready? Seven thirty-three. We can start if you want. Chapter thirteen. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay.
Can you do that? Yeah. I know. That's always. All righty. Well, then I think what we'll do, we'll uh, leave it right there, and then we'll start uh, chapter 13. Really gets into the, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan, and the, the powers that he's going to have, and the stuff that he's going to do, even though they're, they're imitations. But a lot of people, because <laughs> they don't know, they're going to believe everything that's going. And he's going to have satanic power. Yeah, it ain't going to be nothing uh, like, I think only that, you know, when the when the Antichrist takes his fatal wound, right? I don't think Satan has the power to give life back, but it's going to be something that they make it look like he's resurrected just like Christ, you know, the great prophet. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, all righty. So you want them coming up here then? Okay. <laughs>